Hello again, I'm Kim Dodsworth with another short story of quality. Hans Fallada, the German writer, lived from 1893 to 1947. He wrote about ordinary people and their ordinary lives. He wrote about people in prison and out. He'd actually served time himself. Today's story titled, Just Like 30 Years Ago, tells of two people condemned to a prison of their own making. The story is taken from Tales from the Underworld, published by Penguin Modern Classics in 2014. Back when Gotthold fell in love with her, Teeny was a dark blonde, slender slip of a girl. She was fresh out of Thuringia and was serving customers at her relative's restaurant, somewhere in the north of Berlin. She had coiled braids over her ears. She liked to laugh, and for some reason, she was nice to Gotthold. Gotthold was the son of an ambitious schoolmaster, but in spite of considerable physical and intellectual prompting, he never got past fifth grade, so he'd been shunted off into the banking business. In disfavour with his father, he sat at the current accounts window and thought bitterly of those who got on in life, who were more gifted and laughed more. Today, after thirty years of marriage, Teeny knows that Gotthold never truly loved her. He only wanted to take her away from the others and keep her laughter and her cheerfulness for himself. At the time, he was a dazzling match for a poor waitress who didn't even speak proper German. Today, today, well, at fifty and fifty-three respectively, they're pretty much through with their lives. Their two children, a boy and a girl, are married off. His ambition to make it to branch manager has remained unfulfilled. In the course of the latest wave of rationalizations, they gave Gotthold early retirement. There they are, sitting in a little house in the suburbs with a bit of garden. They have their small, dependable pension guaranteed as long as they live. And aside from that, what have they got? He's become yellow and wrinkled, has got hold. With his scraggy little yellow bird's head, he spends all day pottering around at home or in the garden. He's forever wiping something, nailing something, polishing something. How did the sideboard get that scratch, Teeny? He wheezes. It wasn't there yesterday, and it's there today. What did you do? He wipes. He gets some furniture polish and heats up the wax. He never reads a book. But he's always on Teeny's case about something. Where did you leave the little red vase with the white angel that the Hempels gave us for our wedding? I was thinking about it last night. I haven't seen it for ten years. It broke, says Teeny, or she says nothing at all. She's grown fat. Her feet are killing her, but even at the end of thirty years, she still tries to be gentle. She keeps trying. She rushes through her household like a wind in a hurry. In fact, she has hardly anything to do. The children have left home, but what she does do, she wants to do quickly. Quick, Gotthold, hurry! The reeds have already planted their strawberries. Run to the nursery. Why should I? You run. They'll be laughing all over their faces if we're last to put our strawberries into the ground. But have it your way. He fiddles with his azalea, pinches off a diseased-looking leaf, examines it to check that it actually was diseased. I bet you knocked into my azalea, too. No reply. All right, then at least tell me how many strawberry plants we need. You'll never give me proper information. Her daughter's written. She's seen a fur coat. Only four hundred marks. She's wanted one for so long. Could mother not help? It would be so nice. They get three hundred marks pension. Her son-in-law makes seven hundred. But, of course, she will help. Letters like that are sent care of the neighbours. Her husband mustn't see them. He mustn't notice anything at all. If she's a diligent housewife, she can save fifty marks of the housekeeping money without her husband noticing. She also needs to go to the doctor again. Her leg is giving her such jip, she's sure she's ruptured a vein. That makes him happy. He doesn't mind shelling out forty or sixty marks for something like that. You'll see, he says. Does it hurt? I always told you not to run around so much. Does it really hurt? It makes him happy when she's in pain or upset. 
Their son didn't write on her birthday. You see, I told you so. You always stood up for the worthless so-and-so, and the result is he's got no respect for you now. He's right, too. Now he's a court official, and you can't even speak proper German. His little yellow head bobs around on his narrow shoulders. He laughs. Do you remember the time I wanted to slap his cheeky face? It was Christmas of 1909, and you got in the way, and I slapped you. See? He laughs again, that he potters off into the village. Secretly, he goes to a cafe, and he stuffs his face with cake. It's his passion, but it's not good for him. His gallbladder screams. At night, she gets up and makes him compresses. Hotter, he screams. Hotter. It's because you don't know how to cook properly. I'm sure you must have had some cake again, Gotthold. How can you claim something like that? Don't shout so, Gotthold. The neighbours. That's why I'm shouting. I want them all to know about the kind of wife I have. The woman can't even speak proper German. Five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years. How many more? Thirty more years. His father lived to be really old. Sometimes she succumbs to despair. Then she locks herself away and has a cry. At least she's safe from him there. Then he comes and rattles the door. What are you doing, locking yourself away? Since when have you locked the door against me? Are you keeping secrets from me? Who wants money from you? Those leeches. It's nothing, got hold. I just felt a bit sick. A bit sick? You see, didn't I tell you not to eat gherkins at night? They never agree with me. Yes, she's in despair. But for ten minutes at a time, half an hour at the most, she's just remembered the last time they were together. Her daughter-in-law was wearing such an ugly jumper. She'll knit her a pretty one, buy some wool, get going on it, eight hours a day for one week. Her eyes are hurting. Are they really hurting you? I told you. But if it's done, it has to be done quickly. She's already looking forward to her daughter-in-law's pleasure. Finished. Off to the post office, mailed it. She waits for three days, a week, three weeks. Then at last there's a postcard. Best wishes from the wonderful Baltic, Helga, Hans. Yes, the jumper is really nice. But she's on to something else by then. She's remembered something. They've got the little spare room for visitors, though of course they never have any visitors. She's going to put Gotthold's bed in there and keep her bedroom for herself. For thirty years she hasn't had a single night to herself. Of course, he'll never agree to it. She lies awake for nights, thinking. There's her sister in Lernberg. She'll have to send Gotthold an urgent invitation. What about some financial advice? After all, he is the banker in the family. She'll have to keep him there for two or three days. In the meantime, she'll get a man to help her move the furniture. She'll do it in such a way that he won't be able to move it back unaided. He'll swear and scold and rat, but he'll never hire anyone to help him. He's too stingy. In fact, it probably won't even occur to him. First, She'll leave the door open between the two rooms, then half open, then closed, and finally locked. Oh my God, she'll be able to sleep alone, like she did 30 years ago. She dreams and fantasizes. Please God, let it come to pass, then at least she'll have her nights to herself, just like 30 years ago. I hope you enjoyed Just Like 30 Years Ago by Hans Balada. I'm Kim Dotsworth. Next week, I'll have another short story of quality for you at this time. Till then, bye for now.